So a few years ago, I did a video on the Octava MK012 Hypercardioid. It was the movie set that came with the 70 Hertz high pass filter. And I basically purchased it after watching loads of videos because it was in budget to be used as an out of frame microphone. Now I was in kind of like my microphone infancy there um, when I was doing that kind of content and didn't really know what I wanted for my channel and how I wanted to progress it forward. There was a lot of learning going on and I stupidly sold the Octava and I always regretted it. Okay, even though I've got some nicer boom microphones now, I've always missed it. I've always wished that I had one back in my kit bag, especially to use it as a secondary microphone. The only problem is, is with it being a Russian made microphone and not really available on any sites anymore, um, like new for retail, I didn't feel very comfortable buying it. If you want to buy one, it's fine. You know, this isn't a political video, by the way, but I didn't feel comfortable. So I've been scouring eBay for a while trying to pick a setup, but I will be honest, I'm completely tight. Um, I'm always trying to bid on stuff, you know, low balling, all of that stuff. I'm, an, I'm just not, I don't like to pay inflated prices and I've seen the Octavas starting to creep up in price but I managed to get a set we're actually using a hypercardioid now for £150 but I managed to blag me all three capsules with it as well so we've got the hypercardioid that's up here that's boomed the cardioid the omnidirectional the 10 db, 10 db pad um, I've also got the clip for it as well and I've got the official shock mount but I left it at work 150 beans, absolute bargain. So I thought, because I'm sending this microphone off to be modified in the new year, that I would do some tests with it. And we will test all the capsules, we'll compare them. I'm gonna do it boomed, table mounted, under boomed, polar patterns, all of those tests, they're all in this video. So you'll be able to hear what all of these capsules sound like for indoor dialogue. Let the tests begin. So I thought we would test from widest to tightest. That's how we're gonna do this test today. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about the test setup when we move on to the cardioid or hypercardioid capsule because right now we're using the omnidirectional capsule which is going to be picking up the whole freaking room. This is something that you're probably not going to use too often for indoor dialogue but there is definitely some situations where you would use it maybe if it was like a round table talk and you only had one microphone you know lots of people when you need a big pickup area this is still going to do you well it's just going to pick up every reflection everywhere and it's just going to pick up you know all of that sound all of that room tone it is going to be 100 percent present so i got up super early this morning to make this video made sure i got myself all looking good all cleaned had some nice food got all the lighting set up all the desks nice i got room to move around everything is nice everything was set for me to have a video ready by lunchtime and then some builders have started doing some work next door. They got the ladders out. They're doing a little bit of bashing about and stuff. It's not too loud, so I've not really got much of a problem with it. And I was thinking, should I do the video a little bit later in the day? But then I thought, do you know what? We're using three different pickup patterns. A bit of background noise is probably actually good. So I will mention if there is some loud noise at any point, just to see if it was picked up on the microphone. But um, anyway, yeah, this is just a quick audio test of the omnidirectional pickup pattern table mounted. We will do it um, boom mounted in a minute as well for you. This is what the omnidirectional capsule sounds like. I am now using the cardioid capsule. So this is gonna be now a much tighter pickup pattern. So we shouldn't really be picking up much from the rear. That's not always entirely true though, because the way I see it is audio can bounce off the wall in front of me, come back, bounce behind and go back into it. So it's not completely true. Or if someone's talking behind this microphone, it will bounce off the wall, come back and go into the front of the capsule. But both cardioids and hypercardioids are gonna be much better for indoor dialogue, whether you've got it table mounted, whether you're just under frame or whether you're booming it. So for the test setup then, I am using a Zoom F3 set to 32 bit float. Um, if you wanted to know like what level I've got it set to, because it doesn't really have gain on it, you just set like a input level. Um, it's set to 32, 48 volts of phantom power. Now I've got it on the video mic NTG shock mount, but yeah, this is the cardioid capsule. I have heard some very good things about this capsule. Like originally I only owned the movie set that came with the hypercardioid. A lot of car noises going on outside now just to see if you can hear and pick that up. That's a van moving around. But back to where I was, I've heard a lot of good things about this cardioid capsule and it is one of the best that I've listened to at this price range, although I've never owned an SE8. But yeah, the cardioid sounds absolutely fantastic. I'm not putting foam pop filters on these today, which is kind of why I've got it at a bit of an angle. 
Now I am using open back headphones as well for this test, but I've got the volume super low. It's just to hear it in case I pop the capsule. That's it essentially. And we're finally on the capsule that you've probably skipped past everything else that I did in this video beforehand, because if you came here for indoor dialogue, I'm pretty sure all you wanted to listen to was the hypercardioid. Am I correct? Did you skip all that stuff? Go back. There was some great content there. Make sure you go back. If you just skip to the hypercardioid sections, you need to hear the comparison. Okay. So hypercardioid capsule on the desk, pointing towards my mouth, 45 degree angle on the video mic NTG mount being recorded into the Zoom F3. Now you will notice there's probably a little bit more bass response, I would say, from the hypercardioid. Like I said, I haven't got the headphones up very loud, but when you tighten up that pattern, you do get a bit more of this response. That's why shotgun mics can sound a bit bassy at times when they're up and close. Now I am running a high pass filter on this, but only a 60 hertz. I'm not really going to do any processing to any of this audio. The only thing I'm going to do is because I am a terrible breather, which is why I keep questioning why do I play with microphones and test them. But I will, might just remove my breaths, put on an expander. Now there's a lot of ladder movement going on outside at the moment, so be interested only if that's picking up. He's got a really good whistle on him. I don't know if I said that right. Was that a little bit pervy? But he's whistling some good tunes. Like, he's on it. So fair play to him. So this is me now talking into the front of an omnidirectional pickup pattern. This is the front of the Octava. I am now moving it about one foot over to my right, just off of screen. Look, there it is. You might hear the builder whistling at the moment. Can you hear the builder whistling? I'll just stop. Not sure if it's being picked up. Now this is an omnidirectional pickup pattern. One foot away from me, one foot to my right, pointing at me at a 45 degree angle. We're now coming back to the center. We're now going over to my left just off a of screen, holding it straight forward as I look straight forward. So this is one foot over to my left, and then I will angle it back in at about a 45 degree angle, and then bring it back around to the front. So again, this is me talking into the front. This is me now moving around and talking into the side. This is me talking into the rear, and I didn't find that it's picking up that much. I did buy this second hand, so I'm not sure, you know, is there an issue with this Omni? I'm now back on the other side, and then I'm back around the front and my wrist is twisting and there's cable coils around everywhere. So I am now talking into the front of a cardioid capsule. This is me talking into the front of the cardioid capsule. It's about seven, eight inches away from my mouth. I will bring it in close now for the proximity effect. Really trying to hold on to my peas. Okay, really trying to hold on. I am now moving the cardioid capsule over to my right. It's just gone off screen. I don't know if it's off screen or if my red bars from my Sony camera recording are in the way. I think it's just there. There it is. But it's about a foot away from me. So it's a foot to my right and a foot in front of me. I'm now turning it into a 45 degree angle, pointing directly at my mouth, trying to maintain talking forward. A lot of stuff to focus on here. Coming back to the center. I'm now taking it over to my left. It's about a foot away. About a foot away from me. You know the deal now. We already did this with the Omni. And then I'm bringing it in at like a 45 degree angle. Anyone that's interested in what it would sound like underboomed, this is it now underboomed, so it's out of frame. This is what the cardioid capsule can sound like underboomed. And then this is it again, nice and close, coming in at a 45 degree angle. So I'm now back to talking into the front of this. I think I might have just popped it a little bit there. I'm now moving around to the side of a cardioid pickup pattern. It should start to fall off about here as I'm turning it around and I'm swinging it about because I feel rough from last night still. And then I am now talking into the back of a cardioid pickup pattern. So it shouldn't really be picking up much from there. But like I said, I have a monitor in front of me. So the sound is going to bounce off the monitor and come back into the front of this capsule. And I am now on the other side of it. And this is where it gets twisty, but I found a new method. I just put it up a little bit too high there. Let me do that final twist around and back into the front of a cardioid capsule. You're all going to be like, it's a hypercardioid. I don't want to see it. What's it like? What's it like underboomed? This is it underboomed. I'm pointing it kind of at the top of my head now, bringing it down to my mouth. Going all chesty with it. Going all chesty. There we go. Now a hypercardioid, although it's tight from the front, it's going to pick up a little bit from the rear. So this is potentially picking up sounds that bounce 
off my monitor and hitting the back of it. That potentially can happen here, even when we're talking to it front on. Same test again. Moving it over to my right. Is it off the screen? I think it's gone. And then we will bring it back. 45 degree angle now, pointing at my mouth one foot away from me. I'm kind of expanding on this video as I get further into it. So to be honest, yeah, anyone that skipped over the Omni or the Cardioid, it wasn't as good as this. That's me then again, you know, one foot and a half, just over a foot away from me directly in front. Moving back over to the left. I can't do more than a foot, not because of camera frame, but because I have tiny little T-Rex arms. So there we go. It's now coming back at like a 45 degree angle and all the way back to the front. We're now talking into the front of a hypercardioid capsule. Talking into the side of a hypercardioid capsule. Turning around, talking into the rear. It should be picking some up now. I might even face away so I'm not looking at my monitor. This is me now talking into the back of a hypercardioid capsule. And then we are moving around to the other side of it. We've got to do the little twisty roo-roo now. There we go. And I am talking into the front of a hypercardioid capsule again. So shall we get this microphone boomed? So we've moved on to the omnidirectional pattern. The builders are just leaving. Um, so he's just drove off. So hopefully we don't have any more noise or disturbances. And I can just concentrate on the video. Again, I don't think you're going to be booming a omnidirectional for indoor dialogue unless you need to capture lots of people and you only have one microphone. That's maybe where you're going to use this. Now, as for the boom, it's literally just here. So it's just out of frame. I'm going to move around a little bit. It's omni. It should be picking me up the same no matter where I am. Okay, if I'm coming round, should just be picking me up. This is the omnidirectional. Let's move on to the cardioid so I can tell you about this awesome cheap little boom arm that I'm using. So we're now using the cardioid capsule. This is going to be making it a bit tighter. We're not going to be picking up as much reflection from the ceiling now above me. Still have the microphone boomed. Still running into the Zoom F3. 32-bit float. Kept the gain the same as well, about 32. The builder is just leaving and he has one of those uh, uh, things, you know, like when you do the reverse. So I don't know if that's being picked up. Interesting to know about that. Now, obviously, this is going to be a little bit more directional. It's not going to be as tight as a shotgun or like a hypercardioid, but it is going to be a bit more directional. So I do want to kind of come over a little bit to this side. Like I'm just like, like I've got someone over here. Like, oi, you're right, mate. There's no one over there. I ain't got any friends. All right. Just me and my mics. Moving over to the left. Moving back to the middle. Moving back over to the right again. Now I'm just kind of facing towards it. So I am talking on access to it, but just, you know, not directionally straight on. And the same again here, talking directly to it. So that is the cardioid capsule boomed about eight inches above my head. And again, we're back to what you probably just skipped past all the rest of the video to see. I just came for the hypercardioid. There's loads of other hypercardioid videos to watch. We're doing a capsule comparison, but this is now the hypercardioid boomed. Again, you're probably going to notice that the bass response goes up. If you're just thinking, oh, it sounds a bit boomy compared to the cardioid. Remember, I'm only running like a 60 hertz high pass filter here. All right. I'm not doing any kind of EQ post processing. I want you to hear the capsules as is. I just put in a 60 hertz because I just always think you should put in a little bit of high pass filter. I'm also a bit of a bassy talker anyway. So let's talk about this boom pole. So this boom pole is made by a company called Gravity, Gravity Stands, which I think were created by Adam Hall. So you remember like Adam Hall stands and speaker stands. They make some awesome stuff. Everything's really good value. Everything's modular. You can pretty much buy all the pieces separately. And this thing is like 30 quid. It's essentially just like one of those, you know, like the Elgato kind of multi mounts or like the cheaper kind of like light boom stands that you have on your desk. Um, there'll be a photo of it anyway for you to see. And I'm going to make a separate video about this boom pole. And then it's got like an 80 centimeter boom on it. Super light, super compact, and I can just attach it to the back of your desk. No C stand, no extra boom pole needed. You know, nothing that's coming in from the side that gets in your way. It's literally coming straight in front of me and it's super compact. Honestly, I have wanted something like it for about five, six years. And I think, I don't even think they're 30 pounds. I think they're like 26 or something. And it was just, it's a must buy. I've literally bought another two since I bought this one um, that I use at work. Because now I just don't even have to set up boom poles, especially when I've got people sat at tables. You just clip them to the side and just get it slightly out of frame. Absolutely fantastic. Let's move around this pickup pattern a bit. Because again, 
hypercardioid is going to pick up a little bit from the rear. So this is if you've got very tight ceilings. If you're in a very tight space and you need to have the boom high, you might actually find a cardioid is better in that situation, all right? Because it's going to pick some up from the rear. So this is me now moving, you know, over to the right again. Looking over there. I've got food over there. It's probably why I go over there first. I'm just looking at the food that I'm going to eat after this video is done. That's me talking completely off access from it. Access, axis, completely off axis. And that's me now kind of looking at it 45 degree, but kind of away from it a little bit. I don't know what I'm doing. I'll be honest. I don't have a clue what you want. I don't know what test you want. Tell me, let me know in the comment section. I'm going to be doing a bunch of super cardioid and hypercardioid comparisons. <laughs> Even got one of these bad boys. So there'll be a lot of tests coming over the next month or so, but that's just me moving around it and then just back on access. All right. There we go. I just wanted to do some tests of this Octava. I will be doing quite a few over the next few weeks because I am planning to send it to get modified and I don't know how long it'll be until I can just get an unaltered preamp because I don't really want to be using a modified one in order comparisons. But I'm really looking forward to getting this modified. Um, and the reason I'm looking forward to getting it modified is basically because I don't want to buy another one of these. <laughs> I don't think it will be as good as my teeny tiny little Sheps. But just the times when I need two tight directional microphones for sit down interviews. I think this is going to work well and I've been impressed with all of the capsules. I think they all sound great. Um, so yeah, if you're able to pick one up, definitely get one. I don't know if I mentioned at the beginning of the video there, for me, I wouldn't buy them direct from Octava at the moment. I can't justify sending companies in Russia money, but if you can pick them up on the used markets, I can fully recommend it. I'm not going to sell it this time. One of my biggest regrets was selling my MK012. That's when I was in like microphone in infancy, didn't really know what I wanted, what I needed for my channel, and I always regretted it. So I'm super happy that I've got one again and I've got all the capsules. Super happy. Anyway, make sure you subscribe. If there's any videos you would like me to compare this to, spoiler, the next video is going to be this Sennheiser E614. Let me know in the comments section. Make sure you subscribe and I'll be back with some more videos very soon.